some thank you so much, Nate. So I want to welcome everyone again to our class today. Just like Nate said, today we are talking all about Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe. I'm going to talk um, all about that amazing product and give you some tips and tricks how to make these super cute mugs and wine glasses like you saw in our project event photo. Um, so yeah, we always get the question, um, can you seal washi tape with Mod Podge? And the answer is yes. So we wanted to do a class today showing you guys how to um, use washi tape and Mod Podge in conjunction with each other and just create these really fun projects that everybody can do. And before we go ahead and get started, I just wanted to let you guys all know too that Chris Williams is moderating the class today. So if you have any questions, um, Chris has an abundance of knowledge about um, this product that we're using today. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and Chris will either answer those questions herself or relay them over to me. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So um, first of all, I'm gonna go over the supplies that you're going to need if you're following along with me today. So of course you'll need um, a surface. So your surface can be a lot of different things. I'm pretty sure we listed in the supply list that you can have either a ceramic mug or a glass wine glass, but um, you can use any kind of substrate or surface that you want. You can use metal, ceramic, or glass. So it's really up to you. All three of those work uh, well with our Mod Podge dishwasher safe. And um, we'll talk more about Mod Podge dishwasher safe in a second, but just metal, ceramic, glass, whatever your surface is, those three will work great for this project. Next, you're going to need a grouping of washi tape. So washi tape is always so much fun. It's really easy to use. Um, they have bright, colorful patterns um, and everybody I know I love it and um, everyone I know loves it too. So you get to, that's the fun part about this too. You get to choose your very own palette, your own colors and patterns. Um, so that's great. Um, next, of course, you're going to need your Mod Podge dishwasher safe. So um, Mod Podge dishwasher safe, once it's fully cured, it is top rack dishwasher safe, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it's definitely unique to our other um, uh our other Mod Podge products. This is the only product that is dishwasher safe. So if you made a Mod Podge product or sorry, project, then you can now wash it yourself. Something we kind of always say here at Plaid is that if it's handmade, it should be hand washed, except for this, which is awesome. So it leads to really easy cleanup of your uh, projects that you're making. One thing I do want to point out too, it is non-toxic, but we can't say that it's food safe. So when you are doing a project like this, you just want to make sure to stop um, applying Mod Podge about, you know, an inch or an inch and a half, two inches down, just so that your lip doesn't touch it. But it's non-toxic, it's just not food safe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to show you guys um some of the really cute projects that we're going to be showcasing today so you can make really cute letters and words with your washi tape and it's super simple you just um, obviously cut out your washi tape and to make these really fun cute letters or you can make um, kind of a stripe pattern like this and then once you're done with your pattern and you apply your dishwasher safe you're good to go okay so let's go ahead and start so first I'm gonna take my uh, ceramic mug and I'll just use this roll of tape. It's also one thing I wanna point out too, it's also handy to have some painter's tape or some stencil tape around. Um, for example, if you want to leave that lip free of Mod Podge, then that's good to have so that you do get a really clean line. Um, you know, just the nature of Mod Podge, sometimes you do see some of those brush strokes. So if you want to, um, you know, keep that area super straight, this is good to um, where the, you know, where the Mod Podge stops. If you want to keep that area super straight, then this is great for that. And also you'll notice that this formula of Mod Podge in particular is a little bit more thick than our normal matte satin and gloss Mod Podge. So, um, you know, you can see some brush strokes on your uh, project, no big deal, but it's just, that that is what it is. Okay, so let's pick out our washi tape colors. And while we do that, Chris, do we have any questions so far? No, not so far. Um, but Emma, it might be a good idea to tell everyone if you did anything to prepare your mug first before you put oh, yeah. your washi tape on. 
Yes, I always forget. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> okay, so another important thing to note, of course, thank you, Chris, before you put on your tape or your uh, Mod Podge, is you want to clean your ceramic, your metal, and your glass. And you can either really do it, um, you know, a multitude of ways. You can just clean it with some warm soap and water, or you can use some um, rubbing alcohol or some glass cleaner. Okay, and so I just have this little spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. And uh, some paper towels. And I'm just gonna make sure that um, I wipe down all the surface where I want to apply my Mod Podge and where I want to um, stick down my washi tape. And the reason we're doing this is because um, we want to make sure that that um, if there's any like oils or grease from our hands touching this or just, you know, it being out in the open, we don't want those oils or that dust to be on here because that's going to form a barrier between our surface and what we're either trying to tape on or Mod Podge on. And I see that question right there. What about using other materials? So of course today we are showcasing how to use washi tape, but you can Mod Podge so many different things onto um, your metal, glass, and ceramic with Mod Podge dishwasher safe. We'll also show how to um, do a simple little gilded wine glass, this little uh, splotchy gilded wine glass, which is adorable. Um, you can use napkins, you can use paper, pretty much anything that you can use regular Mod Podge for, you can use uh, for your Mod Podge dishwasher safe projects as well. So that's awesome to note. And Emma, we did have a question earlier. Someone was asking about whether it is Mod Podge uh, dishwasher safe, if it is microwave safe. No, it is not microwave safe, unfortunately. Um, right. But yeah, just like, of course, like it says in the name, it's dishwasher safe, which is so awesome. It is top rack dishwasher safe, which um, if you've been using Mod Podge for a long time and you had never heard about Mod Podge dishwasher safe, then it is pretty exciting. Okay. I know, I know everyone's excited. Yes. Okay, good. So I'm just trying to center this a little bit. So we get to pick our washi tape. And one thing I just like to be mindful of too, I like to have all different sizes and patterns and colors of washi tape, just to give some interest to my project. We don't want like all the same length or the same pattern over and over again. And you totally could, that would be really cute. But the great thing is that Michaels has a bunch of different packs of washi tape and they come in different widths and a um, bunch of different fun patterns. So you really get to um, customize it to how you want your mug to look. And let's say you were doing like a bunch of different mugs and then giving them as gifts. That is a super idea or like making vases or something like that. Um, that would be a great idea. And while we're doing this, I just want to give you guys a tip. Um, sometimes when I am trying to make a straight line on a curved surface like this, I end up struggling quite a bit. But um, one of my coworkers, Sherry Ragsdale, who is another amazing content creator here at Plaid, she gave me this incredible tip. So what we want to do is we want to find an object. Let's, so first off, let's say if my, um, if I want my tape to be about yay high, then I'm going to find an object that equals that height. So we have just this regular painter's tape. And you know, you don't have to search for anything crazy. Just find something that you're already working with, like some stencil tape, or maybe a bigger uh, piece of the washi tape, or a, a wider piece, I should say, or like a paint bottle turned that way. Um, whatever you have around you, for instance, it is this tape just this one time. So we're going to hold that in place. And that's going to be kind of like our marker. And now we're going to take our tape. Okay, and once we first place it down, we're gonna use this stencil tape to hold our place. And so now all we have to do is turn and um, we'll have to end it there because we have our handle. But isn't that a great little tip? You don't I'm have to so worry glad about- you're showing that. Yes, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, it uh, creating a weird wave. It is just super straight all the way around. So you just, you know, find those little markers that hold your place, um, however high you want them to be. 
And for instance, you could probably do it with the washi tape. Um, and then you get straight lines every single time. That's such that a neat tip. I'm sure everyone appreciates you sharing that one. Yeah, I hope so. When Sherry told me that, I was like flabbergasted. My life was changed forever when she told me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we just want to close that. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys that little tip. Okay, so one thing that you do want to be mindful of too is you just like say if you are using washi tape and not napkins or glitter or gilding, um, then you just want to be mindful that your washi tape is super flush to your surface because we don't want to create any pockets of air in our dishwasher safe because that can prevent like, uh, you know, a breach in the barrier and then water can get inside, which we of course don't want. So it's not nothing to worry about. You just want to make sure that your uh, tape is super flush to your surface. And that's easy to do once you are mindful and thinking about it. Okay, let's do our trick again. Is that the right height? No. I want everyone to notice that it's the mug that you're moving around and not the roll of tape. That's what's yes. helping you keep that line so nice and straight. It's such a great tip to share. Yes, thanks for pointing that out, Chris. So I'm not moving my tape at all. I'm letting my mug move um, and I'm twisting that with my hands, but my tape is staying stationary. And I'm just going to connect. I was going to say the nice thing about those washi tape patterns too is, is like where you're trying to meet and marry it up. It's hard to tell where the stop and start, you know, they blend, the pattern blends so beautifully. Yes, you can kind of tell here. You can't even tell that, um, you see that? You can't even really tell that I stopped it because like Chris said, the patterns really do blend beautifully. Okay, and we'll go for this pink one. Okay, so really what, since we're doing a middle piece like this, since we already have our kind of height markers, it's a little bit easier to eyeball if, because we just want to place this in the center. And I'm just kind of holding my uh, mug pretty taut just so that we do get a really crisp, clean line. We had a question a few moments ago um from one of our viewers and she would like to know can we use permanent or heat transfer vinyl to create mugs like this too yes you absolutely could and then if you if you sealed it with dishwasher safe mod podge you can absolutely do that great question uh-huh that's looking really pretty emma awesome thanks chris okay so once you are pleased with your pattern um, now comes the fun part. You get to seal it with a uh, Mod Podge dishwasher safe. We did have another question too from a viewer and she was asking okay. if like in this case where you just put your design on the container itself part of the mug, you did not decorate your handle. The question was, do we need to put Mod Podge dishwasher safe on the handle too? My answer to her was if the handle was decorated, yes. So uh, I don't know if you want to go into any more detail than what I answered, but that was a question that you were asked. Yes, that is a great question. So in this instance, um, I would just want to apply the Mod Podge dishwasher safe right above my tape because we want to create a barrier because when water comes into contact with the Mod Podge, we don't want it to seep under and get to our napkin or our paper or our tape or whatever is on our surface. So it's kind of like, we, yeah, like, like I said, we want to make that barrier with the Mod Podge. So um, we like, we would maybe even want to apply some Mod Podge like right here because that's where our tape meets it. So exactly like Chris said, since this handle is not decorated, we're not going to worry about applying the Mod Podge dishwasher safe to this part of the handle. But because this part of the handle touches right up against our tape, we're going to want to apply some Mod Podge dishwasher safe there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. 
All right, so actually, you know what, before we get to our Mod Podge dishwasher safe, let me show you um, just one more design. So um, just because this is a class all about Mod Podge dishwasher safe, let me show you guys how to use a napkin. And there's so many different pretty patterned napkins out there right now too. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, your local uh, convenience, like dollar store, um obviously michael's has an incredible selection of napkins and i feel like people always have like a a drawer filled with party <laughs> napkins from like birthdays and you know holidays have you been to my kitchen emma <laughs> yeah i feel like most people have that one drawer which you can totally steal from now and craft with yeah okay so okay. here's another tip i'm going to give you guys um Chris, don't judge me on this one, but I'm going to dip my pointer finger in my Mod Podge just so that it gets a little bit tacky. Um, I don't want a whole lot of Mod Podge on my finger, but we just want our finger to get a little bit of tacky. And now once our finger is tacky and it's kind of wanting to stick to things, I'm going to use it to pull off the first ply of my napkin. So this is an important step whenever you're wanting to Mod Podge with napkins. So see how that happens? If you've never known that uh, napkins have multiple plies, then you might be like, that was crazy. But um, usually napkins have at least three plies. And we think that they just have two plies sometimes too, but they really do have three plies most of the time. So we're going to remove this one ply and let's keep it over here. We can use it to wipe our hands clean or something later. Uh, and then you just want to keep removing those plies and you only want to be left with this decorative layer. While you're separating that one, we do have another question and this is from okay. Lisa. And Lisa wanted to know, do you have to use a special type of mug or bowl, Emma? That's a great question. No, you don't. Um, you know, Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe works really great with three different kinds of surfaces, metal, glass, and ceramic. And those are all because they are all uh, non-porous surfaces. So um, there's no like pores for the Mod Podge to sink into. They're totally smooth and flat. And so those are three uh, great surfaces to use. So most mugs are ceramic. Most glasses are glass. Um, you can use plastic as well. Um, so, you know, like plexiglass and stuff like that, any non-porous surface is going to work great. And you could use it for wood. You could use it for um, like, what are some other uh, surfaces you could use, Chris? But you can make like wood coasters and seal them with right. Mod Podge dishwasher safe. Rocks. Wood, is canvas, a great thing. terracotta. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Those would uh -huh. all work too. Now we do uh, have a comment coming in from Tracy and she said she did not know that napkins had three ply and she just learned something new. So thank you, Emma. Well, good, I'm so glad. That's awesome. Okay, so um, usually when I Mod Podge with napkins, there's like two things I like to do. Sometimes I like to Mod Podge the pattern whole. So I'll cut out a big chunk of it and Mod Podge it, or it's fun to cut out the individual parts of the pattern, like these beautiful blue flowers and this kind of chinoiserie pattern and actually use those as little appliques. So it's really up to you. Does that make sense what I just said, Chris? Yes, it does. Okay. You can use so, the whole piece in its, in its entirety of the whole pattern. Yes or you can tear it or cut off pieces and use pieces and parts. Yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, it's really up to you what you wanna do. One a piece of advice I would give, if you were to Mod Podge this um, like blue flower onto white ceramic, it would appear beautifully. But if you were to Mod Podge this blue flower onto this clear glass, then it probably would look a little less opaque than you would like it to. And I'm gonna tell you guys um, something that I like to do. Let's say I wanted to Mod Podge like this whole piece. So let me hold this up real quick. Let's say I wanted to Mod Podge down this whole piece of napkin to my glass and make a cute little bud base. Um, once the Mod Podge is on there, it's not going to look as opaque because it will be wet and you'll really see how thin the napkin is. It'll be um, almost like transparent or translucent. Um, I like to apply a layer of folk art multi-surface paint and you just want to use a really, really light color um, for your napkin, like a white or a cream or a light gray and apply that to your 
vase or whatever you're using. And then once that is totally dry and you've applied enough layers, then I would put my napkin on and then your napkin will be super, super opaque. So those are just some napkin tips if you guys wanna get on your Mod Podge napkin game. But let's um, do this project that was listed in the um, event photo, this beautiful gilded wine glass. So of course, Michael's has some really awesome uh, gilding sheets to choose from. You can see on this one, we used um, gold. Um, and the cool thing too, you get the white and I'm sorry, the white, the gold and the silver because um, it is kind of double-sided. Oh, maybe this one is not, I thought it was. Okay, um, you can use the gold or the silver leaf. Michaels has both options to use in store and online. Okay, so now we are going to break out our Mod Podge dishwasher safe and we're gonna actually use the Mod Podge dishwasher safe as a kind of gilding adhesive. Excuse me. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I'm gilding, one thing I don't really wanna do at first is I don't want to apply like smooth, thick coats. I kind of wanna just dab, dab, dab in little blotches and I'll show you what I mean. Is that any kind of special brush you're using, Emma? No, this is just um, a sm very small flat brush. You could use a, a foam brush. You could use a round brush. It's just what I had. And I'm just kind of dabbing. And now we're gonna take a piece of our gold leaf and just lay it right onto our surface. And I'm just gonna use my pointer finger to tap this down. Okay. And then we're gonna wait for this to dry. And then we're gonna use a soft brush. So you can use like a soft uh, flat brush. I would wanna use a bristled brush. I don't think a foam brush would work as well for this step, but a foam brush would totally work for the first step, applying the Mod Podge, just not um, removing some of this excess gold leaf. So this probably won't do it as well because the Mod Podge is still wet, but once it is, the Mod Podge is dry and you just kind of like gently brush over it, the parts that are attached to the Mod Podge are gonna stay and the parts that are not attached to the Mod Podge are gonna fall off. So you just get a really smooth, um, like beautiful gold leaf pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, let's just do that for a second. And it's and gonna you... take, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask a question to help everyone. If you were going to do both the gold and the silver, would you do like all gold and then come back and then hit some silver here and there? Or would you alternate between the two as you're applying the? That's a great montage? question. It's it's really up to you. Um, you know, if you want to just have your gold out and work with that first and then grab your silver, you can do that. Or you can apply like, you know, five sections of Mod Podge and then have, you know, both of your gold and silver at the same time and work on them both um, at the same time. Great question. Okay, and it's gonna take a while for your Mod Podge dishwasher safe to um, dry. So you do have some work, some, you know, generous working time to do this, which is nice, of course. So you can apply like, you know, five different sections and then go in with your gold leaf and not worry about it drying. And I actually do kind of prefer to wait for my um, Mod Podge dishwasher safe to get a little bit tacky. Um, just I found that my gold leaf sticks to it just a little bit better at, at first. Emma, uh, yes. we did have a, a couple questions coming in. Okay. Lisa, Lisa was asking about the Mod Podge and is it easy to wash away from the brushes? That's a great question. Yes, it, it is super easy to wash away from the brushes. It's water-based and it's non-toxic. So all you need to do is just use some clean soap and water. Um, of course, you don't want to like let the Mod Podge dry on your brush. So if you are working um, in an area that you're in, you're not by a sink, just have a water basin like you would with like acrylic paint or like tempera paint or something like that. Um, but great question. It's super easy to just wash out with, I use just use normal, you know, warm running water, but um, yeah, it's super easy. 
Right. The Mod Podge works like a glue, a sealer, and a finish. So think about putting glue on a paintbrush and letting it set aside and let it dry. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen with the Mod Podge in a brush if you let it dry, just like Emma just said. So yeah, always wash your brushes when they're the product is still wet and you're done painting. Yes. Another question for you, Emma. Uh, Anita is asking, can you also use the napkin technique that you were just sharing a minute ago with the gold leaf sizing and the gold leaf material together? Um, yes, you totally could. Like, I assume you're talking about base coating your glass piece first. You absolutely could. So as you can see, just the nature of the gold leaf, it is more um, opaque. Um, so you don't need to. Um, to get some really great like op opacity here you see how opaque that is um but if you wanted to kind of go for like a cool mosaic look and paint this like a you know powder blue and then have some of that gold leaf on top that would be gorgeous you can definitely do that but you don't have to but that's a great question well also think about striping too emma like you were showing with the washi tape you could band the bottom with oh, the yeah. podge and then put a stripe of the gold leaf around the top Yes, absolutely. That would be gorgeous or kind of do like a little ombre. So you have more of the gold leaf down here and then, uh, you know, it, it, it decreases in intensity once it rises to the top. That'd be great. Okay, so a question for you from uh, Joseph. It, okay. Is it suggested to do this sort of crafting on a dinner plate? Would it be safe in the dishwasher? That's a great question. So I wish I had a plate to show you guys. I'm trying to look around to see if I have anything that would be close. Um, that's a great question. Um, so you don't want it to come into contact with your food, like we said. It is non-toxic, but it is not food safe. So, <coughs> excuse me. So one thing that I would recommend you to do is uh, maybe decoupage like a charger. So you have your charger that's beautifully decoupaged and then your plate that you're actually eating off of is just plain and not decoupaged. Or if you have a glass plate, you know what? I'm gonna to try to find something where I can uh, show you guys well. Let's see, let's see. Grabbing this right from the set. This is not obviously not a plate, but it will do the trick. So what I would recommend for you to do, Joseph, is so let's say you're eating off of this side like you normally would, and this is a clear glass plate. I would um, flip my napkin over, flip my plate over. Now my plate is upside down. And I would flip my napkin over so that the front of my napkin is going to show through the glass plate. So I would uh, apply my Mod Podge down to this side, and then I would, you know, turn my napkin around so that it's facing down and apply it that way, smooth it out, obviously. And so then when we flip it upside down, we see that beautiful pattern from our napkin because it is a clear plate. Um, and then your food is not touching it, so you don't have to worry about it. And that's another great thing you can do kind of working in reverse yeah definitely yeah all right emma another question for you okay, this is from miriam yeah this is from miriam she's like wanting to know can you mix acrylic paint into the mod podge yeah you totally could so um like we talked about in the beginning you don't want to heat your mod podge dishwasher safe so i don't know how you would cure and i'm sure chris can answer this because she is uh like a uh has an abundance of knowledge about all of our <laughs> products here. I don't know how you would cure your uh, folk art multi-surface without like heat curing it. Um, so if you wanted to actually wash it in the dishwasher, I don't know how the folk art would um, react to your Mod Podge. Do you have an answer for that, Chris? What did you say? I would say that you're probably using a very small amount of yeah. acrylic paint to the mixture of Mod Podge. It would be mostly the Mod Podge dishwasher safe. So I feel like you'd be okay that way. Okay. I, I'm wondering if Miriam is trying to cut two steps into one when you were talking about base coating before using the Mod Podge oh. uh, or before using the pay patterns of the um, napkins. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool idea. If you do that, Miriam, I mean, you decide to post it on social media, we yes. would love to see it. So if any of you um, decide to post this, um, post one of these projects on your social media, make sure to hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts. We are always yes. looking under those hashtags and we love to see what you're working on at home. And we're not just saying that we really do look under those hashtags and we love to see what you guys are making at home. So just again, those are make, hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts. And we have a question from Maria. 
She's okay. wanting to know, can you paint the ceramic mug and then paint it, or I guess top coat it with the Mod Podge? Yeah, absolutely you can. So um, yes, um, like we said, anything that you would normally like use in your regular decoupaging project, you can use with Mod Podge dishwasher safe. So if you wanted to base coat it first, um, all you wanna do that's different is let's say this, um, you know, let's say I had something that was, I keep pulling from my from my set. Um, let's say I had this wooden box, and I was just uh, mod podging it with paper, and I just cut a little applique. Let's like see here. <clears throat> okay, I have this cute little triangle shape. If I were to mod podge that down normally, I would just you know kind of, you know, stick it down and then not worry so much about, you know, how I seal it. But with the Mod Podge dishwasher safe, you really, really want to be mindful that you create a barrier um, over whatever you just Mod Podge down so that no water can get to your paper or your napkin or your glitter or your washi tape, okay? Um, you want to have that kind of acting as a blanket so that the water will rush over it and not under it. You don't want to have any holes or any bits that you didn't Mod Podge. And um, since we have a couple questions like that, let's go ahead and I'll start showing you guys how to seal your projects. I think what we like to also say, Emma, just to help everyone understand is we like to fully encapsulate whatever it is, whether it's your strip of washi tape or the section of napkin or the paper yes. like Emma just, you want to encapsulate all of those paper edges. Absolutely. So I'll show you guys. So we're just gonna get some Mod Podge dishwasher safe on our brush. And if you've never used Mod Podge before, it is um, looks milky and creamy when it comes out of the bottle, but once it dries, it dries totally clear. And we're just gonna go right over. And we just want to be mindful as well. We don't wanna get too close to the lid of our ceramic, like we've talked about. It is non-toxic, but it, we can't say it's food safe. And see how I'm just going over all of the tape. And we want to make sure that we get here. We don't just want to hit the washi tape. We want to hit um, to every each side of the washi tape too. Like Chris said, we want to fully encapsulate our washi tape. And just like that, quick and easy, we created that barrier. We made sure that um, whatever we're Mod Podging, which in this case, it's our washi tape, is totally encapsulated by our Mod Podge. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to wait like two to three hours for this to dry. And then we're gonna um, give it another coat and then repeat that process two or more times, just so we get a nice protective barrier on our mug. And then we're gonna wait for it to cure and then it is top rack dishwasher safe and you have a beautiful mug. It's so um, quick and easy to do. You can just whip these out. Like we said in the beginning, they make great gifts, whether you want to do mugs or you want to do um, like uh, little bud vases um, and kind of make it look more luxurious with some gold leaf. Um, and all of this stuff is at Michael's. Now, Emma, as you were brushing that on, can you let, um... I'm trying to see her name. Sorry, Shawnice. No. Uh -huh. uh, does it leave brush marks? Um, not really. It is so, super clear. So if you were really looking for it, you could kind of see a little bit of brush marks. Um, but that's because I'm really searching for it. But I can hold it really close up to the camera. Can you guys see that? Um, you can yes. not tell. And you see on this clear glass too. It, and you know what it almost kind of looks like too? It almost looks like etched glass. Um, I know I keep talking about Sherry Ragsdale, but she's also a wealth of knowledge. Um, and so she gives me lots of great tips too. 
what things she likes to do, you can see here, I'm using just a regular bristled brush, but she likes to use a spouncer, a foam spouncer, and she, or a foam sponge, whatever, as long as it's, you know, fairly dense. She likes to tape off, you know, whatever area she wants or, you know, do the whole thing. And then she likes to apply her Mod Podge dishwasher safe with her sponge or her spouncer instead of her brush. And she just likes, you know, taps it, her Mod Podge on just like you would, you know, brush it on. And um, it almost looks like it's etched because um, the coverage is so even and it is a little bit more cloudy just because uh, the nature of it being spounced on rather than being brushed on. And it is a really cool look. So unfortunately, I wish I did, but I don't have anything that is um, spounced with dishwasher safe to show you guys, but I encourage you to try that technique at home. And of course you don't get any brush strokes at all with that technique. So if, um, like I said, you don't really see any brush strokes, but if you get some in your project and you're really not into it, then you can try that technique and that will work great. It kind of gives you almost like a little bit of a frosted finish, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It looks like frosted or etched. It looks really, really cool. And so Emma, can you please go over one more time? How many sure. coats of the Mod Podge dishwasher safe do you apply and how long do you let it dry in between? Yes. So you Yes. So you want to give it, a, um, you know, apply about two to three coats. That's what we like to tell people just to really um, strengthen that uh, barrier that you've created with your Mod Podge dishwasher safe. And I like to wait about two to three hours in between my coats. So maybe you're like watching a movie or something, or you're doing a bunch of these, or you're doing other crafting. Um, you just have to come back to it. You guys saw how quick it was. You know, the fun part is getting to adhere all your um, beautiful decorations, whether it be your gilding or your napkins or your washi tape. So that's where the majority of your time will be spent. And then, um, you know, you can come back to it and keep applying coats, which is takes a super short amount of time. And for Patricia's sake, she's asking a question. Do you use the same um, finishing technique with the gold leaf sample that you were showing? Oh, that's a Is great question. Yes, you do. You just okay. brush it on. Um, like we, we had just talked about that sponging technique. That would look really cool with the gold leaf. It would look etched or frosted, like Chris said. Um, but yes, you apply it the same exact way. You just brush it on once it's dry. And the reason I didn't do that um, in this scenario is because I'm just waiting for this to dry just a little bit more before I seal it. But um, that's why I showed you guys with the washi tape, because obviously we didn't use any Mod Podge to stick it down. We just applied the tape right onto it. So Lindsay has a question for you. She's got yeah. an idea. She says, do you think this will work well with a clear glass and a photo printed on regular printer paper, like typing paper? Yeah, um, it, sh it should. Um, like we say, you can use anything. You, uh, I've never done that personally, but I think that would definitely work. Um, and you know, I always say too, if you're unsure of something working, um, maybe make a copy of your photo just to so you, um, you know, if it does get a little bit damaged, you don't have to worry about your photo being ruined um, and maybe do some experimenting. I've never done it personally, but I think it would definitely work. What do you think, Chris? Well, the only thing I would say is it would depend upon the home printer that she has. Usually when we decoupage um, on like other surfaces, we always tell people it should be a laser printer rather than inkjet because you, Mod, Mod Podge is water-based and you don't want the ink to bleed on your paper if it's an yes. inkjet printer. So I would say a laser copy would be the better of the two, but yes, a photograph, if it's printed on uh, a, from a laser copier or a laser printer, that would be awesome. Yeah, and of course, if you are, um, I, I think it would definitely work um, with both printers. And if you just wanted to test it out, um, you know, grab some Mod Podge dishwasher safe and print two copies and just without even applying it to your glass, just, you know, brush the layer on and see how it does. Any more questions, Chris? I think that's, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. Okay. Uh, sorry, there's one more. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think, well, I think this is the same thing. She's talking about printing a picture of her pet. So that would be the okay. same. Um, yes. Yeah. And like we said, you guys, um, you know, Mod Podge works great with an abundance of papers and napkins and glitter and, uh, you know, I have been Mod Podging stuff from my printer for a very long time um, and, it, and it works great. So like we say, anything you can Mod Podge pretty much onto your regular Mod Podging crafts, you can do the same with Mod Podge dishwasher safe, which is so awesome. 
Okay. What about um, the curing time? Amy said that someone told her it takes 28 days to cure. And I don't think you've mentioned anything about curing yet. She wants to know if that's as long as she has to wait before she puts it in her dishwasher. Yes. Great question. 28 days is the curing time for Mod Podge dishwasher safe. Um, so yes, just to clarify, that is correct. Okay, another question, Anne would like to know, can you use fabric just like you were showing the napkins? You know what, I am, um, hmm, that's yes. a good question. Yes. Yes, yes you, you can. Yes, yes, yes. I was okay, trying to okay. give you a signal. <laughs> yes. Um, you, and yeah, you just, the main thing is like we keep saying, you want to totally encapsulate whatever you're mod podging onto your ceramic or your glass or your metal. So as long as you have that barrier there, then um, yes, you can mod podge whatever you would normally. Okay. Sally's asking, she said, going from the supply list for this class. Uh, yeah. waxed, waxed paper palette was listed and she's wondering what was that used for? Wax paper palette. You know what? I think that was probably just to um, place your Mod Podge down so that you could, uh, you know, grab it from your palette paper. And it's also, um, you know, I'm, as I'm staring at the palette paper I have as my safety net. So I also just like to use palette paper to keep my workspace clean. And that might've been what that was, um, or just to use as your palette to, you know, place your Mod Podge on and place your paint if you're wanting to use any, you know, bulk art multi-surface paint. So, yeah. Okay, here's a question from Joseph. And if you used the folk art paint, is that food safe? Yeah, so our folk art is not food safe either. So you would also want to be mindful of keeping that away. From, it is also non-toxic, but it is not food safe, just like the Mod Podge. So you would want to keep it away from the lip of your glass. But if you're making like a mug or something, then of course, and your lip is not gonna come into contact with it, or not a mug, I'm sorry, a vase, um, then you can you know, add as much paint as you want and not worry about it. Okay, going back to the curing time, we have another question. Okay. Uh, we, we talked about it taking 28 days for it to completely cure on the glass of ceramic. What if someone wanted to lightly hand wash it before that 28 day curing time? Yeah, I would still want to give it that 28 day curing time, just yes. untouched, just left so that it can um, do its thing before you introduce it to any water. That's a good question. <coughs> Okay, there, here's a, just to make it clear again, uh, Shawnice is asking, just to be clear, I can still use the mug and wash it regular, but I have to wait 28 days to put it in the dishwasher. Um, no, so that's a great question. So once you have applied your Mod Podge dishwasher safe, um, because the ultimate goal is that you want to be able to put it on the top rack of your dishwasher. So you just want to leave it untouched for 28 days. Um, that means not washing it, um, you know, not doing anything weird with it um, and for those 28 days. And then it is top rack dishwasher safe. You know, this is such a neat idea, Emma, when you think about holiday gift giving and people could put hand wrapped uh, Christmas candies inside a mug, or they could, yes. you know, bake, bake cookies or whatever. So now's a great time to be thinking, uh, although there's more than 28 days cure time between now and Christmas, but if you want wanted to make a whole bunch of mugs for teacher gifts or even back to school, put, yes, put pencils in the school. mug for a teacher or something like that. Um, that now's the time to think about it because you've got plenty of time to allow that 28 days of curing time before you give that gift. Yes, absolutely. Back to school, um, Halloween, you know, whatever you celebrate, absolutely. You can start thinking now and then have all of your uh, <laughs> gifts for whoever you want to give them to or just a gift to yourself done in time. Great right. thinking, Chris. Somebody was talking about personalizing. You might want to share with us that washi tape mug that had the M on it. We can't see oh, yeah. that in the camera right now. Yeah, so this really cute little M, a little monogram, and of course, it's just straight lines, just that we um, clipped with our washi tape, and you can make uh, cute little personalized uh, phrases and words as well. I love this that. This one says love, love which yes. is adorable. And when the washi tape comes in those um, pattern coordinating little groupings, it's so great, like that love, you could use a yes. little bit of every every design. 
I know it is so cute. And exactly like Chris said, I mean, Michael's really did all the work for you to put these super cute, uh, curated uh, packs together of washi tape. So yeah. So um, can you do this same technique that you're sharing with us today on glassware and glazed ceramics with regular Mod Podge gloss? Um, obviously you can, you can totally use washi tape and Mod Podge uh, gloss or gilding or uh, napkins, but you can't put it in the dishwasher. It's not top rack dishwasher safe. Right. Right. So it would be for decorative purposes only if you were going yes. to use it for the pen or pencil holder kind of idea, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. The Mod Podge dishwasher safe is meant for items that will be intended to be washed. Yeah, because it is water resistant. So that's the really special thing about it. Yes, yes. I'm trying to think if I have missed any other questions for you. Okay. A uh, couple of comments coming in saying what a great class this is. People are excited awesome. to want to to get crafting. I know they're all heading out to Michael's this afternoon <laughs> to pick up their washi tape and their Mod Podge dishwasher safe. I sure I hope so. I can't wait to see everything that everyone's gonna craft. Be sure, remember, Nate's put it in there and Emma said it a couple of times, use the appropriate hashtags when you post socially your photos of your projects. Yes, absolutely. And I want to say a um, big thank you to everyone for joining us for this class today. It's been a pleasure getting to Mod Podge with you and give you guys hopefully some helpful tips and tricks and maybe even show you a brand new product that you never knew about before. But um, oh. either way, I just want to thank you guys for joining us today. And of course, a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to be here today um, doing this class with you all. And, and I have one quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. Okay. Uh, it's coming in now. <laughs> People aren't ready to leave the classroom. You're so good. Oh. <laughs> um, so uh, will it work on a hard plastic? I'm thinking like maybe a pitcher, maybe she's thinking of yeah, you know, the hard, um, hard plastic lemonade pitcher kind of a thing. Yeah, any non-porous, um, I mean, yeah, it should work fine. Any non-porous thing that you would normally place in the, as long as that's, you know, dishwasher safe too, you would just want right. to think about that. If you're planning on putting um, your project in there, you want to make sure that the product is also dishwasher safe. Right. And but Lynn, yeah. to answer, to add to that, I would just make sure that it is hard plastic and not the flexible plastic like yeah. food storage containers. You don't want the flexible plastic no. decorated because this Mod Podge dishwasher safe does not blend, uh, dry to a flexible finish. Yeah, that is a great point. Thanks for noting that as well, Chris. Definitely, uh -huh. you wanna make sure your surface is not flexible. Okay, yeah, but yeah, without further ado, thank you guys so much again. We are so happy you decided to join us. Um, we have loved being here and uh, sharing some tips and tricks with you all. Like I said, a big thank you to Michaels for allowing us to be here. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.